See, I don't have time to do so get comfortable. Okay. Um, I did not grow up in a Christian home. I actually grew up in the complete opposite of whatever you would think of Christianity, to be honest. Uh, my mom had me at the age of 14. Is anybody here 14? You're 14? Yeah. My mom had me at the age of 14, so she was just a little girl. I was born in Mexico. Super Catholic hope. So for a 14 year old to be pregnant, it was like shame over the entire family. But my mom was already super rebellious at that point, so she didn't really care. So I came into this home and uh, it was just messy. It was super messy. By the age of 20, uh, my mom had already experienced so many things that I had seen as such a little girl. My mom was abused sexually, physically, verbally by, by my father. He was a super abusive man. And so I grew up seeing these things. I grew up, uh, my dad was an alcoholic. He was a super heavy alcoholic. And so you never knew what version of my dad we would get when he walked in through the door. So we moved to the U.S. We had, I had, uh, my mom had my three other siblings that I loved with my entire heart. And so I always thought that it was my responsibility to protect them because I didn't want them to see everything else that my father was doing. So whenever my dad would come home and he would just hear the screaming and I mean, just trouble. You would hear trouble. It was my job to get my siblings and lock them in the closet so that they wouldn't see any of it. And I remember I would cry and I would cover their ears to make sure that they wouldn't hear any of it. So it was a super bad home. We always had, um, what's it called, uh, social services? Is that how? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We always had them involved. Like, the police was at my house on the weekend, okay? So we were that, we were that family that was like chaotic. You know that one family in your neighborhood that you're like, because they're chaotic. That was my family. And I praise God for that because no matter what, you know what the Lord says, that he uses the foolish things to shape the wise. And so little did we know that God was after my family. When I was about six years old, my dad had gotten into some serious problems with the government, and so they deported him. I remember one day he was there, and the next day he wasn't. So he was deported, and because of that, my dad didn't allow my mom to work. Okay, so my mom couldn't have a job. Cut, cut her hair. I couldn't cut my hair for the longest time. Like, some of you guys compliment my hair. It's super long. Up until this year, I hated having long hair because my dad never let me cut my hair. My mom couldn't work. Just a super weird home. We were super into witchcraft, all of that crazy stuff. We had idols in our home all the time. We would go and lay offerings to those idols. And so that was just kind of my regular, regular life. So when my dad was deported, that crushed me. Even though my dad was a bad man to many people, to me, he was like my everything. He was my everything. Even though he did the worst of things, I didn't see any fault in him. And so when he was deported, I just, this anger in me grew. And I didn't believe in God at six years old. But after that, I definitely closed off my heart to any kind of love. And so uh, my family became homeless we, because we didn't have anything. We just lost our home. We lost everything. We were living in hotels. We were living in shelters. It was just kind of chaotic, and I remember just from a young age knowing that it was my responsibility to be alone. Like, it's my responsibility to take care of my siblings. They're my job. They're my priority. I would be getting picked up from school for our social services. They would monitor us, make sure we were doing okay, make sure we were being fed. Sometimes we weren't being fed. Sometimes we didn't have a place to sleep, but they tried their best. Uh, my parents were super into partying, too. I mean, they were out like we get out. They were just clubbing. I mean, they were young. They were like 20 when they had four kids already. And so whenever my dad was deported, my mom didn't let that go. And my mom also became an alcoholic. And so because of that, she started getting into super toxic relationships, like super toxic. And I had to witness a lot of it. And so about a couple years later, my mom actually attempted suicide. And so I remember that's when the foster care system got involved. I didn't grow up in foster care, praise the Lord, but I remember we were just sleeping from house to house as siblings, and I would be so scared that my siblings and I would be separated that I would literally sleep watching the door sometimes or watching the window when I heard a car pull up because I didn't want anyone to come for my siblings. So I just grew up with this super, super, super hardened heart before the Lord. I didn't want anything to do with God. I didn't want anything to do with religious people. Like, I grew up because of the Catholic pressure that we were on. The priest was like kind of lukewarm. Like we would be at 
parties and the priest was there. Like imagine you're at a party and you're like, I'm a sinner. That's literally what I grew up with. I would see the priest at parties. And so we didn't have like this good understanding of what the Bible was. We didn't know any of that. I didn't know any of that. So whenever my mom attempted suicide, I just became hardened to so much of love that people were trying to give, teachers even, that would reach out for help. I didn't want anyone to know what was going on. When I was 12 years old, or 11, I should say, when I was 11 years old, we were home, and my mom had been back in the house now. They were monitoring her, they were monitoring my family to make sure we were okay. And we used to live in a super messy house. I mean, messy, messy, because that's just, in a poverty home, that's all you know. And so we would have trash everywhere. And I remember um, there was one day where my mom just had this random urge, like, let's clean that house. Let's clean the house right now. And that was super weird for us. We never cleaned anything, okay? So we started cleaning everything. We scrubbed the floors, like, super nice. We didn't have nice clothes, but we decided to put on nice clothes that day. And we decided that as a family, we were going to go for a walk. We never did that. I mean, if you know my family, like, I promised to go on a walk. This morning, if you know my family, we don't do that, okay? We don't go on walks together. And so I remember we were like, let's just go on a walk. And so we, we got in our clothes and we went for a walk, and in the distance we heard this music. And this music was just getting louder the closer that we walked to it. And so we just became curious and we were like, what's going on? So we pulled up to the park, and in the middle of the park, there's this uh, service going on. But here's the thing it wasn't just one church, okay? It wasn't just a Pentecostal church. It was a Baptist church, it was a Mexican church, it was just these churches from different denominations all worshiping God together. And so we were just in awe. I remember my mom started crying because this was just, I mean, she had so much in her, so much bitterness that she just was letting it go. But I, on the other hand, I was like, I just want to get out of here. This is so weird, this is so out of my comfort zone. I hate it, I hated the music, I hated the way that people look at us because when you grow up in poverty, people already look at you really weird. And so I remember I was around these church people and I was like, I hate it. <laughs> I don't like it, whatever. And so I remember my heart was still really hardened before the Lord. And my pastor, my now pastor at the time, who was just a stranger, he came up to us. And I remember he looked at all of us and he smiled at all of, uh, at all of us. And I was like, oh my gosh, I just want to leave. Like I was literally, in my skin, I felt so uncomfortable. And I remember he grabbed my hand and he prayed with us. He prayed with us completely and, and my mom's just weeping and crying and you know, some of you guys when people are praying for you, how you just have your eyes open? That was me. I just had my eyes open. I was like, I don't want to close my eyes. I don't want to even focus on what's going on right now. And so because of that, my pastor just, his family got a hold of my family and they did not let it go. They just kept inviting us to church service after church service and we finally came in and we showed up to a church service. I remember seeing someone speak in tongues for the first time and I thought it was the devil. <laughs> I went home and I was like, I'm so scared to go to sleep right now. This is so out of my comfort zone. Because I grew up with witchcraft. I mean, that was the normal. I remember we'd be having dinner and doors would be sliding open randomly while I'm having dinner. Or the faucet would turn on randomly. Or if I'm sleeping, my door would just randomly open on its own. I mean, I just grew up with some paranormal stuff. So when I saw someone speaking in tongues, I was like, that's weird. <laughs> this isn't weird, but that's weird. And so I just remember thinking Christianity was just a no for me. And finally, when we started going to these church services, you get used to them after a while, but then this youth camp was coming up. And my mom pushed for me to go. But at this point, my mom was still in alcohol behind the door. Nobody knew it. I knew it. My siblings knew it. And nobody in our church knew that she was not calling. My mom was the kind of mom that showed up to church hungover. Or, she, you know, even drunk sometimes, to be honest. But I remember we just, we were just that family that, like, we smelled bad again. We were the family that sat in the back and we didn't want to be there. But by God's grace, by God's grace, we kept showing up. And so when I finally went to the youth camp, I didn't know what to expect. And I remember the first night, I saw everybody with their hands raised, and I was like, once again, I hate this, I just want to go home. And then the second night uh, rolled around, and I was with a friend. And I remember, I just, for the first time in my life, I was aware of everything that I had carried. I was just aware of, like, this is not the way somebody should be living. And everybody around me was weeping. If I could describe it, I was the only one with my eyes open right up at the front. And I remember the worship leader came and he put his hand on my head. And I was like, well, I guess I have to close my eyes now. Like, it's kind of awkward if I don't. And so I started closing my eyes. And out of nowhere, I just started crying. 
entire tunnel, the head director came up and started speaking to me in tongues. And I don't know what happened, but something in me, it's like my body was physically on fire. I don't know what was happening, but I remember my body was hurting. And so I just fell to the ground and I'm crying. I don't even care who's watching. But I remember for the first time in my life, I felt the presence of God. And I remember, I didn't start speaking in tongues, but I was just crying, crying. And I was like, what is this? I feel so loved. For the first time in my life, I feel peace. I feel joy. Like, I've never experienced this before. And I kid you not, you guys, that night, for the first time ever, I went to sleep like a baby. I didn't care about anything. I didn't care about, I didn't have any worries. I just fell asleep. I used to wake up a lot during the night to be aware of my surroundings. I didn't do that once. And from that moment, God has just captured my heart. And I remember I was like, God, okay, I'll do this life with you. I'll do it. But you have to do it with me. You have to run this race with me. And so I went back home, but the home situation is still the same. My mom's still an alcoholic. We still have idols up. We're going to this church, but we still have idols up. We're still putting flowers and offerings to these people that we have up. And I was like, God, this isn't right. Like, I feel like this isn't right. I don't know a lot about the Bible, but I know that this isn't right. And so I started praying for my home. In the middle of the night, whenever I would hear, like, those paranormal um, sounds, I would get up in the dark and I'd wake my sister up because I was too scared to do it by myself. And I'd wake her up and I'd be like, Karina, pray with me right now. And she'd get scared and she'd cover herself with a blanket. And I'd be like, fine, I'm just going to have to do this alone. And I would just pray for my home, and I'd be like, God, please save my family, save my family. By the grace of God, my mom gave her life to Jesus in 2021. And now we're here. Press it. It's one more day. That's it. That's it. Just 